Oh, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get into the Chapter 8 Review Number 2 uh, correction video here. So uh, get a red pen out so you can write down a method here. Your method's in red, so red pen, and highlight the methods. Highlight, or, you know, uh, the methods. Okay, also, get out your calculator for the examples that deal with trig. And uh, so if you don't have those things ready, get them out. Okay, pause the video and get them out and ready. Get your red pen out and calculator. Here we go. All right, let's talk method first. When it comes to special right triangles, first of all, we don't use trig and we don't use calculators. You have to figure out how to solve it in simplest radical form. Okay, you want all the radicals and the roots in simplest radical form. So let's start with the first one here. On a 45, 45, 90, uh, it is an isosceles triangle. So let's write that down. Isosceles triangle. What does that mean? That the two congruent legs. Two congruent legs. Okay, so every right triangle has two legs. The shorter ones, right? And it has a hypotenuse. The two legs are congruent. So whatever M is, M uh, is the same thing. So keep that in mind. And in respect to this case right here, cases one and two, or triangles one and two, uh, you're given the hypotenuse. So the question is, how do you get to the leg? Well, all you have to do on any, either one of these problems here is to take your hypotenuse and divide by rad 2. Okay, so let's take that. So first of all, n equals m. They're congruent. Okay, so whatever you get for one, you get for the other one. And whatever it is, it's 7 divided by rad 2. Now, you're supposed to rationalize all fractions. So let's write that down too. So rationalize all fractions. Keep that in mind. So you got to rationalize this. So the way we do that is multiplying it by root 2 over root 2. If I saw root 3 there, I would uh, I would multiply by root 3 over root 3. Whatever the radical is, just multiply it by itself in the form of 1, then simplify. So what do we get? What we get in the numerator, 7 times root 2 is 7 rad 2. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. But we know that's just 2, so we get 7 root 2 divided by 2, because we know that root 4 is just 2. So they are both 7 root 2 over 2. So this is 7 root 2 divided by 2, and this is 7 root 2 divided by 2. They're the same, because an isosceles triangle means it has two congruent legs. So this next one is the same thing. Both the legs are equal. So whatever you get for y, x is the same thing. Why? Because it's isosceles, two congruent legs. So to get from a hypotenuse to leg, you got to divide by rad 2. As I said in number 1, you got to divide by rad 2. Or you got to divide by rad 2 over here. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing because the legs are the same. This is true for all 45, 45, 90s. Okay, so let's do that. So let's take uh, 5 and divide it by rad 2. Simplify a little bit or rationalize. So multiply by rad 2 over rad 2. And what do you get? You get 5 root 2 divided by root 4. What's that? Well, we say it's 5, excuse me, 5 rad 2 divided by 2 because we know that root 4 is just 2. So x and y are both 5 rad 2 over 2, both legs. So this one's 5 rad 2 over 2. This one is 5 rad 2 over 2. It's isosceles, guys. From hypotenuse to leg, you divide by rad 2. Remember, the key to getting ready for the test is remember the methods. Okay? And this in red is the method. Okay? So remember, not the numbers, but remember the method. That's all you have to do. And that's it right there. Divide by rad 2 from hypotenuse to leg. If you're going the other direction, we'd multiply. Do the inverse. You'd multiply by rad 2. If you're getting shorter, you're going to divide by something. If you're getting longer, you're going to multiply by something. Now, in the 30-60-90s, it's a little bit different. So let's talk method here. It's a different method. Uh, every 30-60-90 is scalene, which means it has a hypotenuse, a long side. This is the longest. It has a short side, and it has a median length side. Now, to get from hypotenuse to short side, you have to understand that the short side is always half the hypotenuse. So you divide by 2. This one's pretty simple. You just take 3 and divide it by 2. So n is equal to 3 divided by 2. 
So let's put three halves here, okay? To get from the medium length side, or excuse me, short side to medium length side, you got, you're getting longer because it's longer, okay? So you got to multiply, but this time you got to multiply by rad 3. So my M here, uh, this medium length side, is 3, rad, uh, three halves times rad 3. So 3 halves times rad 3 gives you 3 root 3 divided by 2. You simply multiply the numerators together. All right, 3 times rad 3 is 3 rad 3. It's as simple as that. Let's take, that, take, take this technique, this method here, and let's apply it to this one. Once again, we have a hypotenuse, we have a short side, we have a medium length side. So the very first thing to do to go to media, uh, hypotenuse to short, understanding that the short side is always half the hypotenuse, is we've got to divide it by 2. So whatever the short side is, y, it's 6 root 3 divided by 2. Now you gotta sh you got to simplify it a little bit. And I know that 6 divided by 2, well, that's just 3. So my answer is 3 rad 3. So simplify. So I'm going to put 3 rad 3 here. Now, from short to medium. Over here, I said from short to medium, you multiply by rad 3. So let's do it again. So I got 3 rad 3 times rad 3. Well, you got to simplify everything. So you got to multiply the roots. And you get 3 times root 9. Root, a root times a root is a root. A root 3 times root 3 is root 9. But we know that's just 3. So we get 3 times 3. And so x is obviously 9. And that's how the game is played, my friends, okay? Now, number 5 and 6 are like the numbers 1 and 2. To go from a hypotenuse to leg, we divide by rad 2. To go from leg to hypotenuse, you got to do the inverse. And the inverse of dividing by rad 2 is multiplying by rad 2. So look at the method here, okay? From leg to hypotenuse, you multiply by rad 2. So this one's so easy, it's not even funny. A is equal to simply 4 times rad 2, which is just 4 root 2. These two are congruent. A equals B, which is 4. Okay, this is length 4, and this is length 4. Why? Because it's an isosceles right triangle, right? I said that earlier. Isosceles, legs are congruent. Isosceles, isosceles. Okay, so if that's root 5, that's root 5. So I already know what y is. The question is, what's x, right? So I do the same thing. I multiply by rad 2. Well, so what do we, what do we have? So you got to take root 5 and then multiply by rad 2. So x is equal to root 5 times root 2. And like I said earlier, a root times a root is another root. We know that 5 times 2 is 10, so we get root 10. And that's... That's as simple as it gets. Okay? So the method is from leg to hypotenuse, you multiply because you're getting longer by root 2. If you're coming back, you divide. That's the method. That's all you have to remember. Okay. Now let's learn from number 3. 3 and 7 are similar. They're both 30, 60, 90s. So every 30, 60, 90 has an hypotenuse, a short side, and a medium length side. But this time we start with the medium and we got to get from medium to short. So here I said from short to medium you multiply. Well to get back you divide. So you divide by root 3 here. And the hypotenuse is 2 times the short. So once we know the short you got to double it to get to the hypotenuse. That's your method. Okay so we got 6 here right? Now you got to take 6 divided by rad 3. So y is equal to 6 divided by rad 3. And you got to rationalize it. So you got to multiply by root 3 over root 3. And that gives you 6 rad 3 over root 9. And so that'd be 6 root 3 divided by 3, because we should know that root 9 is just 3. But then you simplify a little bit right here. We know that 6 divided by 3 is 2. So y is 2 root 3. And we write that down right here 2 root 3. Now you got to double that to get x. So, x is equal to 2 times your 2 rad 3. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so x is equal to 4 rad 3. you got to double it, so 4 root 3 up here. 2 root 3 times 2, you got to double it, you get 4 root 3. It's that simple. 8 is just like 7.
So let's do the same thing. You got to divide by rad 3 first. So V is 3 divided by rad 3. Rationalize. You get 3 divided by rad 3 divided by rad 9. That's 3 root 3 divided by 3. But you simplify and you get root 3. So V is just root 3. But then you got to double it to get to the hypotenuse. So u is equal to 2 times rad 3, and that's just 2 rad 3. So once again, you gotta you got to remember the methods here, guys, okay? I'm talking about here to here, here to here, method, method, method. Okay, what do you do? Okay, and if you figure out what to do and you remember it, it's easy. If you don't remember what to do, of course it's impossible, okay? Okay, so I've got two triangles that are attached here. I've got a 45, 45, 90 here. I've got a 30, 60, 90 here. i got a leg, and i got to get to the hypotenuse. So the very first thing I remember is that I've got to multiply by rad 2. Why? Because I just talked about it up here. Look at number 6. To go from leg to hypotenuse, right here, you got to multiply it by rad 2. So let's multiply by rad 2. So let's see here, 10 rad 2 times rad 2 would be 10 times root 4, which is 10 times 2, or 20. So this right here is 20. Let me take this angle out, and I'm going to put a 20 here. That side length is 20. 10 root 2 times root 2 is 10 root 4, which is 10 times 2, or 20. Now that's the hypotenuse on the other triangle. And so what do we do to get to the, the hypotenuse to the short side? Well, I know that it's equal to half the hypotenuse. So I got to take half. So x is equal to 20 divided by 2 or 10. That's it. So this length is 10 right here. So you just put your concepts together. That's all you do. Same thing here. We need to get from short to medium. This is the medium like side. So what do you do? Now, to get from short to, uh, well, from medium here, this is the medium length side, to short side, well, from medium to short we divide, but to get back, you multiply by rad 3. So this has got to be 10 rad 3, because you multiply by rad 3. All right, and now this is the hypotenuse on 45, 45, 90. And to get to the leg, you got to divide by root 2. So x is equal to 10 rad 3, divided by rad 2. You got to rationalize, of course, as we always do. And you get 10 root 6. A root times a root is a root. So you multiply your roots and you get a root, right? And then divide that by root 4. Okay, but what is that? You get 10 root 6 divided by 2, because we know that uh, root 4 is just 2. But look here. What's that? Well, we know that's 5, right? 10 divided by 2 is usually 5, so you get x equals 5 rad 6. Okay, and so you know your answer down here is 5 rad 6. Pretty cool. All right. So let's continue here, and let's do uh, take a look at some other concepts here. Let's take a look at what's called the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, the Pythagorean Theorem is used when you know two sides and you're trying to find the third. Once again, no trig, no calcs. You want your answers in simple radical form. Now, every right triangle has two legs, and the longest side, which is opposite of the right angle, is called the hypotenuse. It's the longest. And when you set up the Pythagorean Theorem, Pythagoras, you know, about 2,600 years ago, said that you take the leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. Some of you guys remember this formula here. This is the same thing, but the problem is people don't know what C is, and C happens to be the hypotenuse. So I try to teach my kids that it's always you always start with the legs. You take leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, and you apply it. The results show that people, most people don't know uh, what A, B, and C represent. A and B are called legs, and C is the hypotenuse. So you start off with the legs. X squared plus 4 squared is equal to 12 squared. And then you simplify. You get X squared plus 16 is equal to 144. 
we're going to subtract 16. And you get x squared is equal to 128. And then you square root. And you get x is equal to the square root of 128. And then you got to factor it. Now, if you want to, you can do it with your calculator. You can enter in 128 and divide it by 2. Let it do the work. And you'll see that the factor is 64. But this is easier than you think. I would stop here. I would use these as my factors. I would split the root right now because I know that 64 is a square. And so I just know it's 8 root 2 right off the bat. So the square root of 64 is 8. Root 2 can't be simplified because 2 is prime. And so this answer right here is just 8 root 2. All right, so let's play with that idea. We got two legs on every right triangle, and then the longest side is called the hypotenuse, opposite of the right angle. So let's set it up, and let's start with the legs. All right, x squared plus 9 squared is equal to 13 squared. And that gives you x squared plus 81 is equal to 169. You've got to subtract 81. And you get x squared equals 169 minus 81. All right, 88. Okay, so you get 88 here. And continuing, what do we get? Let me see, you square root both sides. And you get x is equal to, let me see, let's factor. 88 divided by 2 is 44 divided by 2, 22 divided by 2, 11 divided by 11, 1. Here's your square. So there are your factors, 4 and 22. So root 4 times root 22 gives you 2 rad 22. you got to split the root. Okay, and simplify. It's called simplest radical form, another concept that you guys need to get good at. Okay? All right, let's continue now. We've got another one here. We've got uh, two legs. you got a hypotenuse. So let's start it off as 9 squared plus 13 squared is equal to x squared. And that's 81 plus 169 is equal to x squared. And that's, uh, let me see, 240 plus 10, 250. So 250 is equal to two, uh, x squared. Got a root. And I know that 25 times 10 is um, 250. So root 25 times root 10 gives me 5 root 10, and I'm done you got to simplify the root. Simplify the root. So remember that. Okay? Got to go from here to here. It's called simplifying. All right, last one. Here we go on the Pythagorean theorem. we got two legs. We got a hypotenuse because it's opposite of the right angle. Okay, so we start off with 11 because we start off with the legs. So 11 squared plus, watch this, 5 root 2 squared equals x squared. Make sure you use parentheses. All right? If you don't, you're not going to get the right answer. Okay? I can verify that. Okay? So watch this. Let me show you why parentheses are so important. Watch this. Let me enter in 5 red 2, 5 times the square root of 2, 5 times the square root of 2. There we go. And now let me square it. Boom. Square it. What do I get? I get 10, right? Which is the wrong answer. All right, I'll show you why it's not 10. But now let's take the quantity of 5 root 2. And let's square it. Ah, now that's written correctly. Ho! Oh, you get 50. See that? Okay, you got to use parentheses here. So, how do you get 50? Well, let me see. 11 squared is 121. You got to square the 5 to get 25 times. You got to square the root 2, which is root 4, but root 4 is 2, so you get 2. You got to square each. Square the 5, square the 5, and square the root. You got to square them both. And that's equal to x squared. That's 121 plus 50 is equal to x squared. That's 171 equals x squared. And from here, you square root. And then you got to factor 171. So divide it by 3. Let's use a calculator and make it easy for you guys. So 171 divided by 3 
It's not divisible by 2, so I said, oh, let's try 3. Oh, 57 times. 57 is divisible by 3. Divided by 3. 19 times, that's prime, so divided by itself. Now, check this out. I see a square now. See right here in my table, 3 times 3 is 9. So my factors are right here. So I split the root again. So we split the root as uh, uh, root 9 times root 19. So I get 3 rad 19. And that, my friends, is how you simplify a root. You factor it off to the side and you split the root into two roots. It's called simplifying. So from here to here. That's what a lot of you guys had difficulty with, and that's what you guys need to practice. Simplify the roots. Okay? All right. Now let's do some trig. Let's do some Sokatoa. All right, look at this. Sokatoa. Let me put it up in red. So, sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite divided by adjacent. Okay? Put your pencil at the acute angle, not at the right angle, the acute angle, and go farthest away. That's called the opposite side. Opposite of the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The function that deals with both of these two is called the sine function. Okay? So I'm going to use the sine function here. So the sine of my angle, 24 degrees, is equal to x divided by the hypotenuse, 15. That's the setup. I want to so show the setup. I want to show the process and the answer. So I multiply by 15, both sides, simplify, and I get 15 times the sine of 24 degrees is equal to x. There's my exact. Kick in your calculator. So let's t type in 15 times the sine of 24 degrees, and I get about 6.10. So 6.10, so I'm expecting a smaller number than 15 is x. Okay, and I attached the answer so you can check your work as you go. On my next one here, put your pencil at the acute angle, not the right angle, but the acute angle. Go to the opposite side. The one right next to it is called the adjacent side. Uh, the function that deals with opposite and adjacent is the tangent function, so TOA. So let me see, the tangent of 50 degrees is equal to 11 divided by x. There's my setup. The variables in the denominator, so i got to clear the fractions here. Simplify. So I get x times the tangent of 50 degrees is equal to 11, but I'm not done yet because I haven't solved for x. So step two, divide both sides by tangent of 50 degrees. Simplify. And I get x is equal to 11 divided by the tangent of 50, which is a number, right? So let's use your calculator and let's figure this out. So we got 11 divided by the tangent of 50 degrees. And I get about 9.23. So 9.23. And I'm expecting a, a number. Let me see, if this is 50, this is 40. 40 degrees is smaller than 50, so x is smaller than 11. And I got a number smaller than 11, so that's good. This is shorter than 11, so my answer makes sense. Okay, uh, here we go, another one, number 17. Put your pen at the acute angle, go to the opposite side. There's the hypotenuse because it's the longest side and it's opposite of the right angle. Okay, this is a sine function. Sine is opposite divided by hypotenuse, so the sine of the angle is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, so I show process and simplify, and so I get 17, x is equal to 17 times the sine of 69 degrees, which is approximately equal to, I don't know, let's figure it out. So 17 times the sine of 69 degrees. Is about 15.87, so 15.87. Right, I'm expecting a smaller number than 17 because 17 is the longest side, and I got a number less than that, so that's good. All right, now let's talk about how to find the angles. Okay, now whenever you find an angle, it always involves the inverse. Okay, always involves the inverse. Okay? Always involves the inverse. Whenever you find an angle, it always involves the inverse. 
Okay, so let's set it up. Let's call the angle x here. This is the adjacent side, this is the hypotenuse. So let's use the cosine function, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So the cosine of uh, angle x is equal to three, uh, excuse me, five thirds. Excuse me, that's incorrect. The adjacent side is three, so three fifths. Okay, opposite, excuse me, adjacent and divided by hypotenuse. Okay, now you need to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So my angle here, right here, is equal to the inverse cosine of three fifths. Let's type that in. So you go second cosine, enter in three divided by five, and it gives me my angle 53.13 degrees. So x is approximately equal to 53.13 degrees. All right, it's an acute angle. I'm getting an acute angle. All right, and let's practice again. Opposite of the angle now is four. The adjacent side is 15. The opposite of the right angle is a hypotenuse. I'm not going to use that one, so ignore it. So the tangent function needs to be used on this one. So the tangent of my angle is the opposite side, 4, divided by 15. That's my setup. The angle here, again, this is an angle, is always the inverse of the function, or the inverse function of this, this ratio here. x is always the tangent inverse of the 4 fifteenths. What is that? I don't know. We're going to figure it out, though, right? So it goes second tangent, which is the inverse tangent, of 4 divided by 15, which is about 14.93 degrees. So x is approximately equal to 14.93 degrees. It's an angle. So label it as so. Small angle, small number. Makes sense. Okay, last one. Uh, opposite side, hypotenuse. This is the sine function. So the sine of my angle here is equal to 18 fourths, which means that the angle has to be the inverse sine of 18 fourths. What is that? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Okay, like I always say, let's figure it out. Inverse sine of 18 fourths. 24.15, so 24.15 degrees. Small angle, small number, there we go. Okay, so when you find an angle, all right, it always involves an inverse. Remember that. Okay, label them in degrees as well. And that's all there is to it. Now what you need to do is print this off again, print another copy in practice. So let me put that in red, okay? So print another copy of this all right and practice okay practice perfectly all right that means with quality work all right so do your best all right do a lot of good perfect practice you'll improve you'll get better and you'll be better on test day this is mr ainsworth signing off i'll see you later